What's up guys and welcome to a setup tour. I said that I wanted to do this last week and I very much do, but I ran into a few complications. You know, I think most YouTubers when they do these setup tours, they either record it with their phone or with their point and shoot vlogging camera or with their camera that they use for their let's plays. And uh, I don't have a point and shoot camera. My phone is like a five year old flaming piece of garbage. So it is not gonna be recording anything anytime soon. And the lens that I have on my camera, the only lens that I have, it doesn't really work for this kind of thing. You know, I would need to be really far away or really, really close and it just didn't work. I tried, but it was a disaster. So I think I'm going to just take pictures of everything from many different angles. You guys can see like way more than you would normally see. And I'm just going to talk about it kind of like a let's play with my face camera. It's going to be a little bit unconventional, but it should work to show you guys behind the scenes. So this is my setup. This is my day to day and it looks very weird. I know, trust me, I will explain everything. There is a lot going on here, but I'm going to start off with kind of what's on my desk and under it and that kind of thing and then move out from there. Uh, the desk itself actually is like an old dissection table, I think. I got really tired of having small computer desks with little flimsy keyboard trays and stuff like that. And I didn't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on this nice big desk or table. So I found this huge table that was getting thrown out and took it. And it's just massive. It's hardwood. It does the job very well. So I'm really happy with it, but it looks a, a little weird for a desk. So on my very weird dissection table desk, we have my two Asus VG248QE monitors. Yes, I have that memorized. No, I don't know how. And they're really nice. I definitely recommend them for gaming. Don't really recommend them for creating because they have a really high refresh rate. I think it's 144 hertz. You can see like they're really high frames per second, but the color on them is just garbage. Like, I have two of the exact same monitor and I don't get the exact same picture out of either of them. And that's the case for everybody I know who has this. I know two other YouTubers with these same monitors and they all complain that they can't get the same color reproduction out of the two of them. Which is, you know, it's a little bit troubling when you're a creator if you're making something for people to see. If what I see is different from what you see, then that's a little bit worrying. But at the same time, they're pretty big and they're relatively cheap in comparison to other monitors. So you got to take a trade off somewhere and I'm happy with them. So in front of my monitors, we have my Razer Deathstalker keyboard and my Mionix Neos 7000 mouse. I chose this keyboard because it's a membrane keyboard and I used to have laptops. I got really used to the spaced out chiclet keys and I didn't want to give that up. And I find that mechanical keyboards are really loud. You can hear it in your recording and I don't like that. So I got this. It was a little bit cheaper than a mechanical keyboard. So it's a win-win. And the Mionix Neos I really like because it's really ergonomic. It has a place for your thumb, it has a place for your ring finger and your pinky. So my whole hand is up off the mouse pad and I use these hard top mouse pads so they kind of grind your hand. I find that the, the soft ones, they get really gunky and dirty and I just don't like them. But at the same time, I don't want to grind up my hand and kind of have that like gaming scar on my wrist. So this is a really great mouse. I, I love both of these peripherals. I don't think I'll ever trade them in for anything. And in front of that, I have my Audio-Technica AT2020 microphone. I really like this microphone, even though I hope to upgrade in the future because it is a USB microphone. So it's easy to use. You just plug it in and use it. Whereas an XLR microphone, which is technically better, has kind of a steep learning curve to it. So I'm kind of hoping to learn that soon, but this has gotten the job done until now. And I chose this over something like the Blue Yeti because the Blue Yeti, which sounds the exact same, it's not better or worse by any means. It's really big and cumbersome and the things that you can fit on it are all proprietary to the Blue Company. So if I want to get kind of a pop filter or if I want to get a shock mount, they have to come from Blue and Blue charges a ton of money for that stuff. Whereas all of the stuff that I have attached to this is relatively cheap. So it, you end up saving money by getting this, even though the microphones are the same price. And I have it attached to uh, kind of an awkward um, like boom arm, I guess you would call it. Most people use like a, a folding boom arm, but I like this one because it kind of keeps it a little bit low and out of the shot. So you guys can't see my microphone right now. You can't see it when I'm recording a video. And I like that. I don't like having a microphone kind of in my face or in front of my mouth because I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's awkward to me. I, I don't like it in my recordings. I'm not to say that people who do it, you know, are doing it wrong or anything like that. Just for my videos, I like having it low and out of the way. And this kind of studio arm, I guess you would call it, has done the job very well. 
So above me, I have my two soft boxes, and I cannot stress enough how important lighting is in videos. And I learned that the hard way because starting off, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on equipment, and I ended up buying a couple of table lamps from Walmart and stretching a white sheet over them to kind of diffuse the light. And you can see in my early videos that it looked really, really, really bad. I looked like I had a flashlight in my face and looked really blown out. And that is because you don't have proper lighting. Whereas a softbox, which isn't actually that expensive, kind of bounces the light around in the box and then lets it out in a diffuse manner, which is really nice. And um, like I said, these aren't super expensive. I, I didn't want to buy them because everywhere I went, all these like photography stores were charging like $200 for a softbox. And I thought that was absurd for a light and that I could make it myself. But I ended up getting both of these with the tripods that they're on from some random Chinese distributor on eBay for like 90 bucks. So it was much, much, much better and just well worth it. And then comes these awkward walls that I have hanging all over the place. And this is something that I'm actually really proud of because it's something that I've done recently and has made a big difference in my recording. These are sound dampening walls, but they're temporary sound dampening walls. Usually you'll see YouTubers have this stuff, this weird foam all around them. And the reason for that is it absorbs sound, sound being just you know, vibrations through the air. If it bounces off something hard, like a wall, it comes back and it makes this echo. And it's really, really obnoxious in recordings and you don't want that. So you want to kind of have soft things all around you like this foam to absorb that echo. And that's why people kind of plaster their walls with this foam. But I record in this really awkwardly shaped room. Like there's windows over there, there's windows over there, there's the stairs behind me. I don't really have a lot of wall space to hang stuff and it's a living room. You know, it's multi-purpose. I can't really take over my house to have a studio. So this stuff goes up and then when I'm done, it actually comes back down because I've kind of made this in a very strange way. I ended up buying this foam online and then I went to Kent and bought uh, corrugated plastic. It's the kind of stuff that you see signs made out of. It's really light and uh, it works very well with hot glue. So I hot glued all of the foam onto the plastic to make these kind of temporary walls. So I can hang one to my left, one to my right. And usually they're either leaning up against a wall or they're hanging from a tripod from a rope that I glued to the back of them. And uh, that way I can kind of encircle myself with sound dampening foam. And it makes a big difference. Like you wouldn't think that it makes that big of a difference, but it, it makes a pretty good difference. It would be better if it was actually on the walls, but this was kind of the, the compromise that I could have. And actually the one that's on my desk is on two smaller tripods. And those tripods kind of come up behind and rest in uh, a couple of little uh, plumbing fixings that I kind of put on the back of it with hot glue. It's all hot glue and ingenuity pretty much. And it works really well. So I can take all of this down and just put it away behind my couch whenever I'm not using it. And then when I am using it, I can just take it up. It only takes a few seconds to put up my studio. And I spend most of my day sitting in my Ikea Marcus chair. And this is a chair that I actually had recommended to me by a bunch of other YouTubers. And I really like it. I used to have more of an office chair. You can see it in some of my earlier videos. I did use it in those. And it was really padded and cushy. And because of that, I would sink down into it and have really bad posture and it would hurt my tailbone. Like there would be days where I couldn't really walk around a whole lot because my ass hurt so much. So I needed something a little bit more rigid and a little bit better ergonomically. And this was relatively cheap. Like if you look at gaming brand, uh, like uh, computer chairs, they cost like two or three times as much. And I don't think they're significantly better at all. So this was definitely the best for me. The only complaint I had was that the arms are not very comfortable and they're really low. So I ended up taking the arms off of my old chair and zip tying them to my new chair. And it's awesome. I, I love it. It works so much better. I have bony elbows and these are nice and padded. Very comfortable. I used to record my face cam with a Logitech C920 web camera perched atop a rum bottle because I could not find a decent web camera stand anywhere. And I really did want to put it on top of my monitor because it has that weird like downward like Skype call with your grandma look to it. I didn't like that. So I ended up going with the slightly more inconvenient method of a bottle in my face. And that worked really well for me. I really liked it. But the C920 is a piece of crap. Don't let people tell you otherwise. It is a shit camera. It is the best web camera out there. Still a web camera. Still really, really bad. 
the drivers are garbage, the software is garbage. It, I can't even explain. I could make an entire 20 minute video talking about all the problems that I've had with this web camera. And fortunately, Logitech seems to have addressed that because they announced its successor in the C922, I think it is. And it looks amazing. I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but I definitely recommend waiting and getting that instead. Fortunately, now I record on a Panasonic Lumix GH4, which is overkill. I don't recommend this for YouTubers. <laughs> Definitely don't recommend it. I love it, but don't think that you can't use the, uh, a web camera over this. That's not what I'm trying to say. I definitely am happy that I used that camera starting off on YouTube because it was still really expensive for me. I didn't want to spend $100 on a webcam starting off on YouTube when I wasn't making any money, but I still wasn't happy with it because I'll call a spade a spade. It was a piece of crap, but the Lumix is amazing. The GH4, I got it because it has a bunch of features that I really like. It has like this focusing thing where it'll actually show me what's in focus. So I don't need to worry about not being in focus when I'm recording a video. And um, it has an unlimited recording time, which is really rare for a DSLR. Most DSLRs like the Canon 70D, which is another one that I was looking at, will only record for 29 minutes and 59 seconds and then they'll shut off because anything more than that, and they are labeled as a video camera, they fall under another tax bracket or importation charge or something like that, I don't know. But either way, that's really inconvenient. I don't want to have to make sure every 30 minutes I have to start, stop my video, synchronize again. You know, you end up missing really good moments in a video or something like that. So I got this unlimited recording time. I'm using a, um, Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens. I can't really talk very much about lenses. I don't know lenses very well. I got it because the distance that I have it on my desk, it has me framed up very nicely. So you can see about as much as I would want to, but it's not so wide angle that it kind of distorts my face. And I'm sure you guys have seen that before when you look like at a camera and you're really, really close to it, it makes your nose look really big and your ears look really small, kind of like that fisheye effect. And I don't want that. So this was about as wide angle as I could get. It is just right, very perfect. And last but not least, we have my computer. And I'm gonna try to be concise, short when talking about this because I can ramble about computers for a long time. But one of the popular questions that I get is, what computer do you use to record your videos? And I can't really answer that. Like no YouTuber can really answer that because our computers don't have names. We don't buy a computer at Best Buy or Walmart, we build it. And uh, building a computer is just, it's awesome. I will never buy another pre-built computer again. I only spent maybe a couple of days learning how to do it. Like if you YouTube how to build a computer, you can watch somebody do it from start to finish in like 30 minutes. And then once you've seen it, you know how to do it. it it's like an eight piece puzzle. It's like Lego for grownups. So I definitely recommend learning because you get a lot more for your dollar if you build it yourself and it ends up being kind of a project. You get to take a lot of pride in what you build. So my case is a Corsair Obsidian 750D, and I really, really like it. I think it's one of the best cases out there because it's huge, there's so much room to put stuff in it, and because it has a bunch of removable dust filters, and I live in a really dusty house. It's just my nature. I don't know what it is about me, but I create a lot of dust, and it ends up all getting sucked into my computer through the fans, so every fan has a dust filter on it. I can remove the dust filter, I can rinse it off, put it back, and it keeps all of the dust out of my computer and away from all of the electronics, so it's just great. Okay, inside the computer, this is where I can ramble a lot and I won't. I'm gonna break it down piece by piece and just quickly say why I bought what I did. So I have an EVGA 850 watt gold certified power supply and I bought that because the reviews said that it was one of the best power supplies on the market and it gets the job done. I have an MSI Gaming 5 motherboard and I went with that over the Gaming 7 or the Gaming 9 because a better motherboard doesn't really make any difference when it comes to gaming. It's just kind of hype and more slots to put stuff in but this was big enough for what I needed and it gives you a temperature readout directly on it which I really like because I don't like using software for that kind of thing and it came packaged with the GTX 770 that I had at the time. Like I said, when I built this computer, I built it for kind of the best bang for your buck gaming and didn't have YouTube in mind, and a 770 really did the job. It ate up every game I threw at it. But when it came to YouTube, it started to struggle a little bit, so to upgrade at one point, I actually bought a second 770 for like half off. It was just crazy deal, so I couldn't resist it, and I ran both of them in SLI, and that was around when I started playing Ark for the first time, I think. And that was great for a while, but the issue was 
most games don't use SLI, so I really don't recommend getting two lesser graphics cards. It's better to have one good one, because when you have the two 770s running in SLI and the game doesn't support it, like indie games, early access games, stuff like that, you end up just running that game on one graphics card and it sucks. So I definitely don't recommend it. And Nvidia software isn't great for it. I would turn on my computer and start playing a game and then realize that SLI just disabled itself for literally no reason without telling me. So it's a pain in the butt. That 770 is gone now though because I have since sold both of them and upgraded to a GTX 1080. That was one of the big purchases that I made uh, a couple of months ago because like I said, I got really fed up with the 770s and the fact that they weren't doing what I needed them to do. And that 1080 is a monster. It eats up literally everything. You guys can see if you look at my old Arc videos and you look at Arc now, I'm running everything on all ultra and getting like 60 frames per second. It's just fantastic. It was super expensive. It's super overkill. Don't recommend it. The 1070, even the 1060 would still eat up just about everything, but I went with this because I knew that I didn't want to upgrade again in the future, and I kind of have high demands being a YouTuber. So I started off with 8GB of Corsair Vengeance low profile RAM and I've since upgraded to 16GB because like I said, uh, YouTuber and video editing stuff like that, you end up needing a lot more RAM for that kind of thing. But for gaming, 8 is more than fine. I, I see no difference from 8 to 16 so that's a couple hundred bucks that you can save by not wasting it there. I have a Cooler Master 212 EVO which is a workhorse. People always get water cooling and I never understand why. I think it's just because it's cool, but it doesn't make that big of a difference. This is just as quiet, it only has one fan, and my computer is always at like 35, 40 degrees when it can go up to like 80 or 90 and still be fine. So I really see no need to make it any cooler than that. And this thing costs like 20 bucks, whereas water cooling can cost 100 or more. So I definitely recommend it. It's a great little cooler. What it's cooling, however, is my i5 4690K CPU, and that is the next thing that I desperately need to upgrade because an i5 is great for gaming, it'll eat up anything, like I said, the 4690K, great CPU, but the difference between that and an i7 when it comes to video recording is just significant because it doesn't have multi-threading and multi-threading just means you can run a whole lot of things at once so if i'm just running a game that's fine but if i'm trying to run a game and a recording software for my voice and a recording software for the game all at once multi-threading would make a big difference in that so i want to upgrade to an i7 that's the next thing that i want to do but upgrading a cpu is kind of a scary thing because then you need a different motherboard and then you need to take your whole computer apart so i'm just kind of delaying it so I have three hard drives. I have a Samsung 840 EVO for my operating system. I have a Samsung 850 EVO for recording videos on because they are definitely the best solid state hard drives out there, bar none, best price, best performance, all that kind of stuff. And I have a Western Digital Caviar Blue one terabyte hard drive to just dump files on and mass storage and stuff like that. I recommend Western Digital over something like Seagate because they're the same price, but they have a slightly less fail rate. And uh, I'm really happy with this. I'm always running out of space because videos are gigantic and I really don't want to delete them, but it's working very well for me so far. So I do have my green screen up behind me and I know it's probably been pretty awkward up until this point because I don't have it keyed out, but I did that for a reason because I actually had to make it. It's a little bit different than what I had to do with my black screen, which is pretty much just out of the box. Like you can buy them anywhere. They're a collapsible photography screen. You hold it up with a, uh, a tripod and then you're good to go. But with this, um, I didn't want to buy a collapsible green screen because it wouldn't cover the area that I wanted and uh, it was probably a little bit too expensive. So I just kind of jerry-rig this to work to my needs. So the way that it works is I bought a piece of green fabric online for relatively cheap and uh, I ended up draping it in between two shower curtain rods. And the reason for that is because they're really extendable. They're the cheapest things that I could find. I mean, if, if you want to do something like this, you could use broom handles or something like that. Duct tape them together so that they wouldn't slide around in between. And then I draped it in between two tripods. Because like I said, I need everything to be collapsible. I can just take that off and then roll the fabric around these shower curtain rods and put it behind my couch. So it gets out of the way. The tripods go in the corner again and it works really well. I mean, it's just a giant green sheet behind me, but I can key the whole thing out. And to key out my chair, as I'm sure most of you guys know, I just put a green t-shirt over it. It's really just that easy. I I've seen other people kind of take a piece of fabric and just drape it over it. 
anything that's green will disappear, so you can you can kind of figure it out. But I think that's everything. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them, but I have been rambling for like an hour because I've been screwing up a lot. I can feel my voice giving out, and it's a little bit weird talking about the stuff that you have and explaining it without being boring, I guess. I think that's the biggest thing, is I didn't want to be boring this episode. I wanted to show you guys how I would go about doing these things, but not talking about a computer part for 10 minutes or something like that. So hopefully it was interesting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.